Ollie is probably the first or second trick any skater learns in their career, as it's regarded as one of the most important and essential tricks to know. But why is it so important? Well, to not know how to ollie means to not know how to pop, which means any trick involving the board leaving the ground is completely off the table. For example, if you can't ollie, you can't kickflip, you can't ollie, you can't do front ones, you can't ollie, you can't do board slides, and the list goes on. To put it in mathematical terms, the ollie is like the parent function of 95% of skate tricks, and with every new learn, the ollie gets more and more reinforced. That's why most skaters still know how to ollie after months and years of not skating, like me. Anyways, the ollie is regarded as one of the easiest tricks to learn, so most people can get stationary ones down in a few days to a few weeks. However, for the pros who've mastered them, yeah. The way the board just seamlessly sticks to their feet, it's almost like they're breaking physics in a way. So how do they do it? Well, today I'll be showing you how to ollie. At least according to physics, that is. And to clarify, I'll be explaining things in a stationary perspective with the board and a crack, as that's where most learn how to initially ollie. The ollie consists of three main things, the pop, the jump, and the flick. And if we were to transpose this to physics terms, you have a quick clockwise torque, Newton's third law of motion, and a counterclockwise torque due to friction. The pop. The pop is a quick downwards force perpendicular to the tail and is meant to give the board angular acceleration by using the back two wheels as a pivot point. This causes it to slam against the ground and due to Newton's third law, rise into the air. Don't believe me? Watch as I pop the board while standing on the ground. As you can see, the board spins in a somewhat clockwise direction. One important part to an ollie is your foot position. Many recommend that you position your back foot in the middle of the tail and your front foot below the front trucks. And although by placing your back foot on the edge of the tail you increase the distance from the pivot point, this does not increase the torque because of one non-physics variable, and that's comfortability. For most beginners, by having your back foot right on the edge of the tail, you're not as comfortable standing. Therefore, the magnitude of the force exerted by your back foot won't be as strong. Also, a common misconception is to pop the tail straight down. According to physics, this is wrong. Since torque is equal to the distance from the pivot point multiplied by the force perpendicular to the lever arm, it's actually better to pop back at an angle compared to popping straight down. This is because when you pop the tail downwards, the component of the force that is perpendicular to the lever arm is weaker in magnitude compared to the force when you pop back at an angle. The jump. The jump happens at pretty much the same time as the pop, and to properly jump, as dumb as it sounds, you want to store energy in your lower body by bending your knees, not by bending your back. This is a common mistake and will cause you to simply fall forward. And just to clarify, the jump is a result of your legs pushing into the board, which due to Newton's third law propels you up. The flick. If you popped and jumped correctly, the board should now be at an angle in the air and should look like this. But we'll come back to that. First, if you haven't already noticed, all skateboards are aligned with grip tape. This is a sandpaper type of material and is designed to have a lot of friction due to its rough surface. This allows your front foot to move without letting the board slip past your shoes since friction opposes motion. This creates the effect of the board sticking to your feet. So once your board is at an angle in the air, you apply a horizontal force that is parallel to the ground with your front foot. Your foot does not slide off the board since Fa cosine theta and force of static friction are balanced. And since Fa sine theta is perpendicular to the lever arm, it is the force that causes the counterclockwise torque, thus leveling out the board. Once the board is leveled out, all you have to do is let the force of gravity bring you down. Common mistakes. If your ollies look like this and are not leveled out still, then you're probably not applying enough horizontal force to the board via your front foot. Also, remember to lift your back leg immediately after you jump. Next, if your ollies are a threat to the people around you and look like this, <laughs> then you're probably leaning back too much, causing the force you apply to be straight out, thus sending the board flying. To fix this, you should probably get more comfortable being on the board, and remember to always stay over the board during an ollie. Either way, your ollies won't look like this initially, so keep grinding. It took me at least two months until I could consistently do moving ollies, and even more months until I could ollie a stair set. Skating is a hard endeavor, so keep working and keep trying. 